In September, the UN announced more than 60 countries intend to reduce net carbon emissions to zero by 2050. Even the most committed environmentalists admit it'll be a challenge, but one country in Europe's pledged to do it in half that time. Now on BBC World News, Gabriel Gatehouse reports from Finland. Maybe I can say about the creation of fire. Uh, according to our most old songs, which have been dated at least two or three thousand years, at the beginning of time the world was in darkness. Now the first spark fell from the sky and it fell into a lake. The people on the shores of this lake that were living in darkness they thought they will start to, to make a net that they can pull to try to catch the spark. And it will save us and give us light and warmth. Since ancient times, the people of the north have faced one big threat, the cold. For thousands of years, fire has been the key to their survival. But now the world is changing. The planet is on fire. The forest fires in Siberia, Alaska and elsewhere, those are big, huge indicators of how the planet is truly shifting. The very thing that kept humans alive, burning stuff, is driving the whole planet to the brink. In Finland, one man believes he's found a solution. But he's up against a powerful fossil fuel industry. Not oil, but peat. We don't have much time. A decade is the time frame if worst is to be averted. This story begins in the village of Selkia in eastern Finland. It's a tight-knit community of 300 people. But one day, the local fishermen found their livelihoods suddenly destroyed. There was a uh, massive environmental discharge of acidic waters that killed all the fish in our river. The acidic discharge had come from a nearby peat field. But the dead fish were only part of the problem. So this, this is all... Peat, basically. And clay. Peat and clay. And in its current state, it's emitting greenhouse gases. Correct. Peat is formed of decayed vegetation. When dried, it can be burnt like a fossil fuel. For decades, Finland's main peat producer, a company called Vapo, has harvested peat on an industrial scale. They were given a free hand for over 50 years to, to ditch and train these kind of marsh mires and bogs. In Finland, peat provides 4% of the nation's electricity and 15% of heating. As a power source, it's dirtier than coal, but it gets worse. After the peat has been excavated, drained peatlands continue to emit greenhouse gases. When these were degraded by human land use, they turned into releasing places for carbon. All of this happened without any consultation of the local communities. All across eastern Finland, central Finland, and, and uh, all the way to the gates of Lapland. Uh, the damage is immense. It's moose hunting season. In the village of Selkia, men gather before the dawn. This is an ancient tradition. Now, with a modern twist. Even though the rise of technologies has made assistance to the hunt, but we still need traditional knowledge. In faraway Helsinki, a new government has made an ambitious promise to reduce Finland's carbon emissions to net zero in 15 years' time. Here, the hunters say they're already feeling the effects of climate change. The snowfall comes later, the weather is changing. Uh, more, more rain, much more wind. We, we should act much more quicker. The whole nature is on, on change. I'm personally very worried about it. It's mid-morning before the dogs pick up the scent of a moose. Someone, right? 
Thanks to the GPS trackers, the hunters are ready and waiting. A moose crosses the path, but she has a single calf. The hunter holds fire. It's never a mass slaughter. It's a culture. There is still an understanding of life and death and, and uh, long traditions of how we have been living sustainably. But the hunters don't give up. Later that morning, they get their kill. It's a young male. On its coat, parasites from warmer climes. More signs of a changing planet. Those are the moose flies that are now come because of climate change and they are now like parasites for the animal. They weren't here when I, we were young. The moose will be skinned and butchered, the meat shared out in the community. Tero's share is the animal's liver. We'll come back to that. But for now, he says, the moose hunt has a deeper significance at a time when people appear to be at odds with the planet they live on. In the northern regions and northern cultures, the way we are interacting with the earth and uh, the cosmos is the hunt. We call it traditional knowledge. And this combined with science can provide wisdom and ethics of how to treat the earth and how to live so that humans are not against nature but with nature. There's something we haven't told you about Tero Mustan. He's not just a fisherman. He's also a climate scientist, a lead author for the IPCC, the UN body that advises governments on climate change. When the fish in his river were poisoned, he did something that no one had ever done before. He took Vapo, the peat company, to court, and he won. This is the first recorded event in Finnish history where a village won over Vapo and forced them to exit from that village. Now Mustanen has a new project. The old dried out peat fields on the edge of the village, the ones that continue to release carbon into the atmosphere, he and his colleagues are rewilding them, flooding them with water. Some of those emissions will stop immediately. Immediately, as soon as you cover it in water, that's it? Yes. Yeah. Eventually, this will become a carbon sink, trapping CO2 from the atmosphere. It's a model that could help the country meet its emissions targets and the world to combat global warming. In Finland, we have a massive potential for uh, restoration of peatlands and bogs and marsh mires into carbon sinks that are currently degraded. People often refer to the Amazon rainforest as the lungs of the world. Um, how important are these kind of sites in the north? They are very precious. All the boreal wetlands and marsh mires extend from the Pacific into Finland and then actually into Canada and further. And they are uh, a global sink. So they get it now, right? They're, they're, they're not going to be mining any more peat? Uh, no, unfortunately new licenses are given. They are still continuing this, shall we say, sun, sunset business. Mustanen's message has resonated far beyond his village. A recent IPCC report on the rate of warming in the Arctic had a profound effect in Finland. An election last year was dominated by the issue of climate change. The new government's pledge to bring the country's carbon emissions to net zero by 2035 is one of the most ambitious targets anywhere in the world. In the capital, Helsinki, They've launched a competition to find new solutions to replace the old, polluting forms of power generation. Here's an electric-powered robot bus, one small step towards a greener way of getting around. Actually, we have a lot of solutions, a lot of tools, what we can do already. We, we know a lot about you know, energy efficiency. Like if you've got all the solutions, what are the challenges? It's... Um... Of course, it's, it's a very big change and it uh, needs a lot of political will and political courage. Finland's ambitious carbon target is proof. The political will is there. But the new government is an uneasy coalition. It includes the Greens, who've long campaigned against the use of fossil fuels, but also the Centre Party, which has historic ties to the peat industry. And peat is proving to be a stumbling block. 
So you legislated no more burning coal mm. by 2029. Yeah. Why don't you do the same for peat? That's a good question. I think we should do it, but, but in, it's not in our government program at the moment. Why not? Because we didn't have a politi po po uh, the political agreement on that. Because what uh, a lot of environmentalists say is that if Finland is going to go carbon neutral mm. in 15 years' time, one of the easiest things to do would be to stop mm. the peat industry. And if Finland can't do that, then maybe achieving net zero by 2035 is going to be difficult. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of peatland in Finland. And the thing is that uh, also there's a lot of areas that is very, the uh, peat industry uh, is locally quite uh, important. To find out how important and how powerful, we traveled to the town of Ilamansi, 300 miles northeast of Helsinki. Here, Vapo, the company that Tero Mustanen took to court, operates a peat-fired heat and power plant. The whole element is heated by this power plant. All of, it, all of this town gets its heat from this yeah, power about, plant? About uh, three and a half thousand people is enjoying this heat from here. Hanu Hoskinen was on the supervisory board of Vapo until late last year. We cannot stop this country because of emissions. Of course, we are producing a certain amount of emissions, those emissions are decreasing all the time. I think it's not a problem. Problem is somewhere else. But, that, but, <laughs> but everyone says the problem is somewhere else. Yes, that's the problem. We have and, and that's, and that's a, a recipe for inaction. You are quite right. But we are the cleanest country in whole Europe at the moment. Mm. And we are doing our job better and better every day. Mm -hmm. But we cannot stop heating our houses. It's, in, it's impossible. Apart from his Vapo issue helmet, Mr. Hoskinen wears several other hats, including being a senior MP for the Centre Party, which perhaps helps explain why the new government is still giving the peat industry tax subsidies worth nearly 200 million euros. Let me just ask you one other thing. Um, you uh, were on the council of VAPO. I was. I am not anymore. Okay, until last month. It looks like a conflict of interest. No, there is no conflict. You, you both represent the, the interests of the company, and you take decisions on, on licensing in, on the local council and you're on the Parliamentary Environment Committee in Helsinki. But in these cases there is no problem because, because I have to take care in this municipality that all the people can have warm houses here. It all comes back to heat. Even Tero Mustanen has to burn something to stay warm. In his log house on the edge of the forest, he's helping to prepare the next report to the IPCC. His recommendations will help shape the world's response in the coming years. I think it's far worse than what we have been discussing in media. However, there are also actions that can still be taken. How much time do we have to sort this out? Once we get into 2030s, 2040s, there will be impacts to the global security and global governance, which will be extremely hard to control. I would give it eight to ten years when we really, really, truly have to do at least two things. One, the emission cuts, and secondly, the land use. We will not be able to stop human-induced climate change anymore. There will be impacts, but at least we will avert the worst or make sure that there is some chance of survival. If there is to be a climate apocalypse, then perhaps the hunters of Selki have the skills to survive it. Remember the liver, Tero's share from the moose. You want to taste the raw? No, I don't think I do. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. It's the best. I'm scared. Why? Are you serious? Uh, there's no healthier meat on the planet, but you have to chew. <laughs> what, just the whole thing? Yeah. It's like candy. That is power, something that you kill yourself and they give their life so that you go on. That's quite something. Can I ask you maybe a difficult question? Uh, yeah, sure, of what, course. What lessons can somebody living in a big city of many millions of people take from this? Could you pass the salt, please? <laughs> <laughs> Is that your way of deflecting the question? No. <laughs>
The question is that I don't know, but the forces that have been unleashed by our creed, our misunderstanding of what nature is, and our endless um, economic idea that it can grow without any checks and balances, has come to its end. In their quest for carbon neutrality, the Finns are confronting the same tough choices we'll all be facing sooner or later. And time is running out. We began with a spark. It fell into a lake and the villagers were looking for it. But a salmon got there first and swallowed it. So the fishermen had to cooperate to build a special net. Finally, the fishermen caught the salmon in the net. And with iron gloves, they opened up the salmon. There was the first spark that gave us the fire for survival, for food, for light, for warmth. The message for these times is that the humans only succeeded by pulling together. That's where the, all the hope lies. I don't see anything else. We are at a profound crossroads. We are now in the blinding and uh, bright light of either choosing life or the darkness. <laughs>